got a big week two matchup coming up on Sunday, a divisional rivalry game that always gets testy between the Seattle Seahawks and the San Francisco 49ers. Kickoff set for 4.05 p.m. Eastern, 1.05 p.m. Pacific from Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Going into the 2022 season, it wasn't expected that this game was going to have a lot at stake this early in the year, but that was before the 49ers went down to a bottom 10 roster in the Chicago Bears during week one, albeit in putrid conditions. And the Seattle Seahawks on Monday Night Football, with the return of Russell Wilson to Seattle, pulled off the upset of the weekend, taking down the Denver Broncos. Niners still eight and a half point favorites following that Monday Night football victory the line has gone down half a point and because this rivalry game always gets so physical the over under is extremely low at 42 and a half of course we'll be doing a watch party for it 60,000 people joined us for week one let's top that number this upcoming week in a huge game for San Francisco. Shifting gears now to the 49ers injury report, and keep in mind that we're doing this show on Tuesday during our live broadcast. As of right now, these are the most notable injuries for the Niners. Elijah Mitchell gonna be out two months because of that MCL sprain, huge blow to San Francisco corresponding roster move to Sean Gibson elevated to the active roster. He started at safety week one against his former team in the Bears, and the Niners did sign Marlon Mack to their practice squad. Javon Kinlaw not expected to miss any time, but you know that could change with the flare-up with an ankle sprain. Let's hope that he can give it a go. And then George Kittle, it's going to be day-to-day, going to be a game-time decision. That's what transpires with some of the soft tissue and groin injuries. Do have to give props to the Seattle Seahawks. I don't like this team. Pete Carroll really annoys me. They've owned San Francisco over the last decade going back to 2012. But Seattle, with an emotional game on Monday Night Football, in a raucous environment with Russell Wilson making his return to the Pacific Northwest, made huge stops defensively. They were flying around, causing turnovers, coming through with stops on fourth and inches, fourth and short, approaching the goal line. The defense looked much improved, which was one of the worst defenses in the NFL last year. And Geno Smith, in terms of efficiency, actually outplayed Russell Wilson and made some big plays. Let's be real, though. While I can give some props to Seattle, there is absolutely no excuse. And I mean absolutely no excuse why or if the San Francisco 49ers lose this game, that it should be acceptable. It should not happen. It can't happen. Because 0-2, falling to the Chicago Bears, falling to the Seattle Seahawks, who going into the year, a lot of people thought were going to be two of the worst teams in the NFL, and I think by seasons, and they will be, would be an unmitigated disaster, especially with this schedule getting really tough in the middle part of it going up against some top-tier quarterbacks in this league. And Seattle isn't much improved from last year in 2021, where if you look at their positional rankings, they were 31st at quarterback, 26th along the offensive line, 24th at running back, 7th at wide receiver, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, can certainly give a lot of defenses trouble, especially the Niners. Front seven ranked 30th, secondary 25th, head coach 25th, And in 2022, I understand that a lot of teams can go from worst to first, and there's so much parity in the NFL. But folks, when you match these rosters up against one another, San Francisco is supremely talented. But I'll tell you this, given that this game always has a playoff feel and it's always smash mouth football, it's going to be a dogfight on Sunday afternoon. Kyle Shanahan, his scheme always receives a lot of trouble from what Pete Carroll likes to do defensively. These teams know each other really well, and Pete Carroll knows the ins and the outs of what Kyle Shanahan wants to do. And Pete Carroll against other coaches who run this type of style always comes through and gives them a tough afternoon. Shanahan, 2-8 and eight all-time in the regular season against Pete Carroll. And with the Seahawks atop this division now, it's become even more important for the Niners to come through with the dub. Who you got, though? Let me know in the comments section. Do you think the Seahawks are going to pull off the upset as eight-and-a-half-point underdogs with Geno Smith at quarterback? Or do you think the Niners are going to even up the record at one-and-one? Give me an SF if you think that's the case. Speaking of that Niners record, 
A lot of people going into this year didn't expect the Seattle Seahawks at all at any point in the year to be the leading team in the NFC West, considering you have the Niners coming off an NFC championship game, the Rams coming off a Super Bowl, and the Cardinals entering another big year after they've had a couple of winning seasons in a row. But after one week, Niners, Rams, Cardinals all fall in the opening week of the season. Seahawks pull off the huge upset. Unlike this Chicago game, the weather Levi Stadium for the home opener, it's going to be beautiful. A high of 68 degrees with a low of 57. With this game taking place in the afternoon, it's not going to get sub-60 degrees. Sunshine, though, so Trey Lance can actually make throws without having to do it in a torrential downpour. Coming up next on our preview, keys to the game. What San Francisco has to do to come out victorious. We'll get to that in just a few moments. Stay tuned. But first, if you want to bet on this game with the Niners sporting that eight and a half point line, make sure you do so with our sportsbook partner, BetUS, offering that 125% deposit bonus. Where if you go to chatsports.com slash 49 bet, enter the promo code Niners125 and you put in $100 using that link in that promo code, an additional $125 back, $225 to game with. My keys to the game now, got to match Seattle's physicality with how physical they were going up against the Denver Broncos. They gave the Broncos fits, causing some turnovers, coming through during some of these short yardage situations. Russell Wilson looked like he was in a funk for a little bit of that game. You also can't cough it up in the red zone. This is a note to everybody out there, including Debo Samuel, whose fumble in the red zone did alter and change this game to a certain degree in week one against the Bears. You score there, you establish momentum, and if you go up a couple of scores against Chicago, I don't think they come back and melt that second half comeback. 99 yards and penalties also can't happen against Seattle. You pull off 99 yards and penalties and you extend drives when you're supposed to get off the field, that's a recipe for disaster. That disaster came to fruition against Chicago. Pete Carroll does give young quarterbacks some problems Will his defense do it again for Trey Lance? Pressure is certainly on him. Lance has to play a little bit better than he did against the Bears, but I think he flashed some things. More solid play from the offensive line, which in week one was actually a pleasant surprise. Defensive line here can win the game because Geno Smith just isn't a good passer. Understand that he played well in week one, but he's a backup for a reason. I don't think he duplicates his success. I understand that the Niners lost to Colt McCoy last year, but Geno Smith is even worse. And with that pressure on Trey Lance, it's certainly there. If he doesn't play well, the noise is going to get really, really loud. New betting odds are out for the first quarterback to get benched. Trey Lance leading the charge at 4-1 to one as that ridiculous slander continues. As for that offensive line, let's spend some time focusing on that front. They played well against Chicago considering the conditions. These are the pressures allowed. Trent Williams, 3. It's the most he gave up since the NFC Championship game last year when it was 5, but he admitted he probably shouldn't have played on that Bad ankle. Aaron Banks, though, good news. Only two pressures allowed. Jake Brendel, two. Mike McGlinchey, two. Spencer Burford, first career NFL game. Goose egg, zero. That's a really good sign that Spencer Burford, Aaron Banks, and Jake Brendel played somewhat well. Of course, there were some breakdowns, but I think what we've seen over time, the lack of a dress rehearsal in the preseason doesn't have these teams ready to play. It takes them a couple of weeks, maybe even a month, to really find their footing as a football unit. And we know San Francisco historical slow starters under Kyle Shanahan. So here you go. Who will be the MVP of week two? You think it's going to be Trey Lance? Is he going to surprise a lot of people? You think it's somebody else on the Niners? Or you think the, San, uh, the, the 49ers are going to go down to Seattle and they have an MVP? Drop me a name right now in the comment section. 